Now their latest risky adventure has ended in tragedy here at one of North America's highest waterfalls. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 controversial moments on Jackass. I'm Steve-O and this is the fish hook. For this list, we'll be looking at on camera and behind the scenes moments that either drew backlash or landed the crew in legal hot water. Did any of these instances offend you? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The Jet Ski Lawsuit While stunts go wrong all the time, some backfire worse than others. And some, unfortunately, involve spectators. I've been doing farms for a long time, man. I know what you need. I'm going to give it to you. When Steve-O and Chris Pontius were filming a tug-of-war jet ski stunt, a man named Michael Vicenz Segura stuck around to assist with the vehicles. During the filming, a bungee cord snapped and hit the bystander at high speed. Ah, it hit Mike. It hit Mike. Okay, okay, hit him. Vicenz Segura suffered severe head injuries that would later require surgery to mend. After the incident, he sued Stevo and Chris Pontius for $12 million. The defendants argue that Vicenz Segura put himself in harm's way. All of the press around the case made it clear how dangerous the stunts can truly be. Number 9. Johnny Knoxville Quits One canceled bit for the Jackass show had Dave England eating all the ingredients of an omelet, frying the vomit, and feeding the concoction to Steve-O. I'm Chef Dave, and this is the omelet. A similar version aired on MTV, only it was England himself who ate the omelet. The Stevo version did not pass MTV's censors. All the vegetables were washed ahead of time to ensure Whoa. cleanliness. It wasn't the idea of one man eating another man's fried puke that had them agitated, but the fact that there was no visual evidence of the vomit being cooked at a safe 160 degrees. They requested that the crew reshoot the scene with OSHA agents on set, but Knoxville quit in response, claiming that he didn't want to do a watered-down version of Jackass. Today we're going to make a three-egg omelet. Down the hatch, bottoms up. Number 8. Fishing with Stevo. An extremely and incredibly dangerous stunt involving Stevo, a fish hook, and some sharks is still heavily discussed today. Oh, the hammer is right there. Oh my god. The fish hook stunt starts on a painful note when he puts himself on the hook. After that moment, Stevo jumps into the ocean and flails around as sharks circle below him. He's coming to get you, Stevo. Act like a sick or wounded animal. One even gets close enough that Stevo accidentally kicks it in the head. We understand why this stunt could have many people covering their eyes. And behind the scenes, Knoxville himself questioned if the stunt should even be completed. Despite mixed feelings, the eye-watering stunt became an unforgettable jackass image. Woo! Dude, isn't this movie supposed to be a comedy? Number 7. PETA Boycotts PETA, aka People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, were not happy with Jackass Forever. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass! The movie contains a number of stunts involving dangerous animals. One sees poopies kneeling in front of a snake and goading it into biting him on the nose. Outside of that encounter, the more infamous incident saw a bull charging into Knoxville. No. Hey, have you been around bulls no. before? I've never been around a bull in my whole entire life. Not a real one. But the part where he was sent spinning through the air wasn't the end of things. The treatment of these animals was too much for PETA, who asked the city of Los Angeles to look into potential charges for animal cruelty. They also boycotted the movie and urged their followers to do so as well. Oh, and by the way, the loser has to take the bite from the spider. Number 6. Night Pandas The first Jackass film contains a bit that could be considered racially insensitive. We're here in Tokyo, and I feel like partying. It's called Night Pandas, and it sees a small group running through the streets of Tokyo while wearing panda suits. The very idea could be seen as offensive because pandas come from China as opposed to Japan. Detractors were concerned that their actions were implying that the two countries were one and the same. Additionally, others argue that the bit mocked both cultures at once. It didn't help that the visuals were accompanied by the vapors turning Japanese, which contains a riff that stereotypes the sounds of East Asia. Number 5. 
The Joe Lieberman Letter. It didn't take long for Jackass to attract the attention of politicians. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. Three, two, one, five. <laughs> Senator Joe Lieberman took particular offense to the show. Lieberman was a senator between 1989 and 2013 and was Al Gore's running mate in the 2000 presidential race. After his campaign failed to win the election, he turned his focus to jackass. I'm doing uh, a stunt tomorrow uh -huh. where I get put in a porta potty uh -huh. and dumped upside down, and it's going to be full of uh, poo and whatnot. In February 2001, Lieberman wrote a letter to MTV's parent company to either cancel the show or cut the dangerous physical stunts. He called the program exploitative and argued that it was causing harm by encouraging young copycats. But since the franchise continued to film for over 20 years and counting, it's safe to say that Lieberman's letter didn't work. Do you have any industrial strength adhesives? Someone is in here. Yeah, I think my car is rattling. Number 4. Big Red Rocket A stunt from Jackass Number 2 is arguably one of the most reckless things the team ever did. In fact, it nearly resulted in loss of life. It's moments like these when you know Johnny Knoxville is one gnarly dude. The stunt sees Johnny Knoxville riding a giant rocket that shoots into the sky and sends him plummeting to the water below. During their first try, the rocket exploded and sent large metal rods shooting out at high speeds. Three, two, one. In an interview, Knoxville admitted that the rods nearly killed multiple people, including himself. Jackass is usually pretty good when it comes to safety standards, but creating a situation where metal rods nearly impale multiple people is one of the show's most obvious oversights. If it had been like right here, that would have been a picture wrap on old Knoxville. <laughs> Number 3. Terror Taxi While this prank is certainly a Jackass classic, it could be considered problematic for obvious reasons. The gist is that Aaron McGahee dons offensive makeup to look like a Middle Eastern man along with a prop explosive belt. He then proceeds to mess with the driver while they're on the way to an airport. There's an airplane there. We are very, very close. Boom, we are very, very close. As the stunt continues, the cabbie only gets increasingly angry. The twist is that the driver is in on the prank. And since he's in on it, he threatens an oblivious McGahee with a fake firearm. All the jokes about terrorism and use of brownface were shocking enough on their own. The fact that McGahee thought his life was in danger further pushed the stunt into even more controversial territory. Oh god, dude, I'm so happy right now, seriously. <laughs> oh <my> god. <laughs> Number 2. Blamed for Copycat Deaths Despite the disclaimer that accompanies every Jackass episode and movie, many people have been influenced by the franchise and have attempted their own stunts. But this has tragically resulted in grievous injuries and deaths. Two people have died in stunts involving playground merry-go-rounds. It's believed that the deceased were inspired by a scene in Jackass the movie. And in March of 2008, Cameron Bieberly of Florida was killed in a shopping cart-related accident. It's also believed that this stunt was inspired by Jackass, as one bit in the television show sees Bam and his friends goofing around in shopping carts. I want you to punch me in the face one second prior to takeoff so it softens the blow. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Bam's Firing Bam, where are you going? No, you're not. I'm not doing that. While Jackass Forever got a warm reception, some fans missed Bam Margera. Now I wind up sipping on a beer out front of a hotel on TMZ and I get kicked out for, for being a liability. Although the crew tried to incorporate him, he still continued to struggle with substance use. After Margera broke clauses related to sobriety during filming, he was released from the film. This firing opened up a rift between him and other crew members. His choice to harass his former co-workers on social media caused director Jeff Tremaine to file for a restraining order. This isn't gonna work. 
might. Margera proceeded to sue the filmmakers and production companies over the belief that he was wrongfully terminated and that the film used his creative contributions without proper credit. After reaching a settlement, he would go on to appear in a very small portion of Jackass Forever. Hello, my name's Johnny Knoxville, and this is the marching band. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.